It is homecoming week here in Denton and we are live outside gate four at Apogee Stadium as a bull eligible North Texas Mean Green come back to Denton for a chance to clinch a spot in the Conference USA title game in a CUSA West Division Championship with a win tonight over the visiting UTEP Miners. We'll talk about it next coming up on Mean Green Game Day. Hello everybody, we are the Mean Green Game Day crew outside Gate 4 live here at Apogee Stadium. It's the North Texas Mean Green and the UTEP Miners clashing here in CUSA West action and a chance guys for the North Texas Mean Green to clinch a spot in the Conference USA title game. Kyle Yeomans alongside Kenny DeMiller, Josh Conrad and Ashley Pickle down at the end of the desk. Thank you for joining us here on NTTV Sports and Kennedy, I'm going to start off with you in this La Tech win that North Texas had last week. 24-23, one point win. The first time they've won by one single point this year, which is crazy to say how many close games North Texas has actually had this year. But what are your overall thoughts on what happened in that La Tech game? Well, this La Tech team is a team that has given us trouble over these past couple of years. I vividly remember the last year's homecoming game and La Tech kind of spoiled that game for us coming in and so we were down early uh, as usual or we give up <laughs> these leads coming into the game and down 17 to 7 and tremendous fight as we talk about every week from from this mean green team from Jeffrey Wilson and that high-powered offense to engineer a comeback and we got a we got a miss to go our way definitely to, to so. end the game. It definitely did and it was the first time Jeffrey Wilson has gone over 100 yards since September 30th it's been that long for him just to have a guy who hasn't been there, you finally have Mason Fine struggle in a football game and you have Jeffrey Wilson bail him out like that. I mean, for me, that's huge. And Jay Will, he's been down for a month. You know, he's, he didn't have a great UTSA game, didn't play well in Boca Raton versus Florida Atlantic. But guys, we won by one point. And you know where that point came from? Trevor Moore, 135 <laughs> straight extra points. We won by one. Football is a game of extra points. Trevor Moore key to the game, but Jeffrey Wilson was also the key to the game. Always Trevor Moore. We are, we're, we're not even like through the introduction and he's already, and he's already there. giving him Loves all the credit. Already you know? there. My notes. <laughs> but no, I mean, to think, it's crazy to think about because like we've said this whole entire year completing up to this, when you think of Conference USA football, you think of Law Tech and you think of WKU. Definitely. And then here we are at the top of the conference playing in this game to really get that Conference USA berth into that championship game. And you know, looking at the season, I was like, that's going to be tough. Not only is it against a good La Tech football game or football team, it's in Boca, or it was in Ruston. There we go, not Boca Raton. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's crazy that we went out there and we prevailed. We were able to get the win. And whether it was messy or not, we got that W against a good team. And it was by one point. You know, that's one that you can walk away with and go, Okay, we got it. We're good. <laughs> the, the big thing going into this season with North Texas, you look down the schedule, you say, hey, this is a winnable game. This is a winnable game. The, the games on the road at FAU and at Law Tech were going to be tough. We knew that going in. <laughs> Whenever we went into FAU, we saw how that one turned out. This Law Tech game was definitely not necessarily a given W for this North Texas squad, but they were able to pull it out. And one big reason for that is the defensive line and really the defense as a whole held La Tech a good at scoring offense to 23 points in that ball game. And I think it was really the best defensive line play that we've seen all year from the North Texas Mean Green. Most definitely. We've seen this defense numerous occasions. We we brought up the Florida Atlanta game, which is still a nightmare. <laughs> we probably shouldn't but talk about that one anymore. Averaging almost giving up almost close to 30 points a game. And so for them to stop this team, it it was almost kind of like a defensive performance. Like you said, one of their best performances all year, especially by that defensive line. Big kudos to those guys. And Jamar Smith, La Tech's quarterback, we held him to his second lowest passing yards on the season. The only team that held him lower is Mississippi State. Yeah. That's a team ranked in the college football playoff top Definitely 16 so. right now. So just to have that pass defense has been such a weakness, such a liability for this team. Step up, like you said, it does start on the D-line, getting pressure on the quarterback. 
just the defense step up in the game where the offense maybe didn't have it as a team wide because all year long it's been the offense carrying the defense so you go into the locker room you see those guys defense kind of has a chip on their shoulder they know they've been carried by the offense all year but to finally have a game where the offense maybe doesn't have their best game and you say okay as a team we fully got this we're capable of winning as a team huge for a team's confidence going forward for these final three games. And I think the biggest thing, too, is when we were talking at the very beginning of the season, we had confidence in that defense. We thought our secondary so. was going to be really good. We thought, yes. and you know, with the offense, it was, is Jeffrey Wilson going to be able to stay healthy? Is Mason Fine going to be? How is Jalen Guyton? And then once the season started, it was offense, 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 and the defense <laughs> was actually, I mean, almost even a little bit disappointing at times. Yeah. And to see them finally step up to the plate and, I mean, really have a very good, they were getting those fourth and one stops. They were getting, I mean, just big, crucial stops when we really needed them. I'll take that any day. So it was it was impressive. It really was. And also not to mention the defense was able to get a couple key stops like you talked about in that fourth quarter that allowed the offense to make really another fourth quarter comeback. This is something we've seen over and over from this North Texas team. Is it a problem of inconsistency or is it just clutch play coming from this North Texas side? Well, I think it's, I think it's a little bit of both. I think you, you have to play 48 minutes, 48 yeah. minutes of good football to beat the really good teams. They're, they're, beating some, they're beating some good teams, but it, it, it won't last long if you cannot sustain it for a full game. And so that's what it has to do, and, but it has been some clutch plays. Trevor Moore is your guy for a reason <laughs> because he's come up big. Mason Fine has come up big. Jeffrey Wilson has as well. And so it, it's a little bit of both, but I, I still think you have to put it all together to really be a, a, a complete team, definitely. Uh, I mean, good teams find ways to win football games especially in these close games. They've had no a lot of breaks go their way. You joke about Trevor Moore, but having a guy you know can kick a field goal when you need him to, as an offense you know you don't have to press, you don't have to make that extra throw, you can settle for a field goal. I, we see all the time in college football, and we'll go back to Texas. Texas, as a team with a bad field goal kicker, they never can settle for field goals. They always try to go and it kills their offense. For North Texas, we have a such a consistent field goal kicker, and it's just so much, in all these close games, and the bounces have gone our way. It just says a lot about a team. The preparation, the maturity, just all the things. The coaches, they've been coached well. I don't know what they do in practice, but it's working. Maybe they do late game situations. It's just, it says a lot about a team and how well they've played this year. Right, and I mean, like Josh said, good teams, they make the plays when you need them. Great teams are the ones that play those, I mean, the full, the full time, the full yeah. game that they come out. And I mean, coach said that after our last home game. He said, we still haven't played a full, a full length game. So, I mean, is it great to have those those you know win by one point or the UTSA game where we're we're betting on Trevor Moore making a field goal and he can and he can produce that's great but this team is about to just blow my blood pressure through the roof if we have to go through any more of those games like that just just play and give me the security blanket in the fourth quarter I love those games but I've had enough of those games I am ready for a full we've got this win there's no way we can blow this right now and they need to do that tonight because my blood pressure like i said it's through the roof i'm done with that yeah, it's a so, good thing utep's here yeah definitely so <laughs> utep coming in winless this might be a chance for north texas to like you said get a definite win like that but you know who else has been very dominant in their play this year and this isn't football it's not the gridiron it's the rest of north texas olympic sports quick shout out yes. to the volleyball and the soccer teams volleyball today defeating middle tennessee in three straight sets to win their first Conference USA title in program history. My sister on the volleyball team, so I'm happy for her. I'm happy for that entire group, Coach Andrew Palaleo as well. And then the soccer team winning the conference tournament. Now they did drop their first round game yesterday to the University of Texas in Austin as well. So they didn't end up making it anywhere in the NCAA tournament, but another great season for Coach John Hedlund in North Texas soccer. The new Denton doesn't just apply to football. It's all the sports indeed. Ren Baker's a big advocate of that. And we're going to have his counterpart, Mr. Neil Smotris, on the desk later for some predictions. Also, another special guest, Mr. Zach Orr, will be joining us up here on the desk here at Mean Green Game Day. But coming up next, a little bit of college football playoff talk, and we'll run you around the nation of college football coming up on the other side of the break. I'll be right back. Hi! You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. 
You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No? But getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Hello, everybody, and welcome back here to a Week 11 Homecoming Edition of Mean Green Game Day. I'm Kyle Yeomans, your host, alongside our game day crew. And, guys, last week, Week 10, a big week for Nor or not just North Texas football and their big win over La Tech, but also really the entire landscape of the college football playoff. I want to get into a little national talk here. And, Josh, I'm going to start with you. Ohio State dropping a big game to Iowa, a couple other big upsets in the Big Ten. How bad was Week 10 for the Big Ten? Well, Big Ten fans might want to call their Big 12 fans that they know because they <laughs> might know what it's about to feel like to miss out on the college football playoff. This team right now, but Ohio State today is getting back into it. It was just kind of a disaster this week. You know, Ohio State getting blown out by Iowa. That's the Big Ten's premier brand. That doesn't look good on you. Penn State losing to a Michigan State team. A Michigan State team that's getting destroyed right now by yeah. Ohio State. And so you're left with a two-loss Ohio State is kind of your best chance to get back in it. Maybe a good shot. You saw was Washington lost last night, so that'll help the Pac-12 out. Right now, it just kind of looks like the Big Ten might be left out looking in. I couldn't agree more with Josh. You know, they are there after last week. It's almost guaranteed. I feel like that they're gonna they're gonna know what it's like to not have a team make it. When you have a number six Ohio State get destroyed by Iowa, yeah. that we almost beat them. <laughs> we put up a good game against them. That is just embarrassing, you know. And then you have, I mean, like you said, Penn State losing to Michigan State. That's not near as embarrassing. But Iowa State losing or Ohio State losing to Iowa. Go Hawkeyes, man. <laughs> yeah. Let me say this. Okay. A reporter <laughs> asked Urban Meyer, what is the future of Ohio State? A couple of, after that loss to Iowa. Are you kidding me? I think Ohio State is just fine. Okay. I mean, they. They look er, fine since, today. Since Ur, yeah. Exactly. Since Urban Meyer has got there, they've only lost three conference games. Three. How long has Urban Meyer been there? Not very long. Not very long. But still a couple different But he's years. only lost six or seven overall games yeah. since he's been there. He has completely turned around not only that program, but the Big Ten in general. You look at the coaches now, James Franklin, who was a stud at, at, at Vanderbilt, um, Mark, Mike D'Antonio at, at Michigan State, Jim Harbaugh at Michigan. All of that is because Urban Meyer left the SEC, in which he dominated in the 2000s, and went to the Big Ten. The, the Big Ten is, yeah, that was a, that was a bad loss. And they've had two uncharacteristically <laughs> bad losses in the last two years to Clemson and now to Iowa, but I, I think they're just fine. We got to talk about Wisconsin, though. Yeah, Wisconsin's I was about to say, still, everybody's sleeping on Wisconsin. And there was articles this week going out in everywhere and saying Wisconsin 13 0 could be left out of the playoff. That's ridiculous. Yeah. If Wisconsin wins out, if they beat Iowa today, beat Michigan next week, beat whoever's out of the Big Ten East in the Big Ten title game, Wisconsin will be in the playoff at 13 yeah. 0. They'll easily move up. I think it could be one of those things where we saw Ohio State didn't move into the top four until they won the Big Ten. I think Wisconsin could stay at like eight or seven until that final week. Mm -hmm. We talk about the Big Ten being left out, and yeah, they will be. Their big time teams are out. But Wisconsin goes undefeated, they will be in. Easy to go. Yeah, that's fair enough to say. I mean, again, and just, I mean, just looking at it overall in particular, there are so many there. I mean, there are good teams right now fighting for that. Even the Big 12 is fighting for that right now. And I mean, it's just. Will they make it this year? I don't know, but I agree with you, man. Asking asking a person like Urban Meyer is this, what does it mean for the future? It was one loss. It was a bad loss. It was one loss. But, yeah, I mean, that, that's over the top. I can agree with that. So with everything that's going on to the Big Ten, it kind of takes your eyes off of really what's going on north of here and kind of goes to the East Coast and what the ACC has been able to do with a Miami team, a Notre Dame team that is coming in and, and will play Miami today. Those two teams meeting for the first time in the top ten or while ranked in the top ten since 1988 
You know what that game was was called and what is effectively known as? A big game. A big game. No, it's known <laughs> as the Catholics versus Convicts game. We've got a little bit of a Mean Green game day throwback, and I'm going to hand things over to my buddy Brent Musburger on the call in 1988. CBS welcomes you to the biggest game so far of the 1988 college football season. Number one Miami and unbeaten Notre Dame. And when you play football at Miami, these are the kind of games you can't wait to play. You really don't have to build this one up very much, do you? You know how high the stakes are. Miami to win back-to-back -back national championships needs this one. Notre Dame to get back to the top, they have to beat the Hurricanes. You also know that there have been hostilities between these two schools. A short time ago, the coaches meeting at midfield, shaking hands. We thought the hostilities had died. But then, as the Hurricanes were leaving the field, an ugly few moments down there in the end zone. Pushing and shoving broke out. There was some kicking. Police had to step in, and finally the Hurricanes were escorted back inside the locker room. Dawkins wide to the right, Brown in the slot. Conley, the wingman on the right side. Three wide receivers right. They're going to go for two. Back to throw. Walk, look, look, look. Has the time. Lost the ball. The pass is down. It's Always love seeing the history of college football, going back and seeing some vintage footage like that. 1988 is really the last time that these two teams have been good at the same time. But guys, I'm going to ask you, is Miami back and is Notre Dame back? Because Miami's undefeated, Notre Dame's in the top four. I think it's no question that these guys are back. You, you said it yourself, Mark Rick has done a great job of yeah. turning around that Miami program. And someone said it, if you can just keep all of the Miami players in Miami, this team will compete for a national championship every year. <laughs> Notre Dame, uh, there were some people that weren't high on them coming into the year. I was one of them. I'm completely surprised, but I'm okay with it. I know Nick Laupius is in the back. <laughs> He's <laughs> definitely in the truck, love Because it. when you have the historic teams uh, rise again and, and their success, it feels like college football is better. Yeah. Miami, Notre Dame, once UT gets back in there, <laughs> it'll, it'll be great. Their way. <laughs> I'm not sold on Miami being back. You, you can have a turnover chain. You can do all this stuff. It doesn't mean anything until you actually win the big game. There's interviews this week with like a lot of their alum and all that. They're not back until they win a national title or yeah. even win a conference title. This team hasn't beaten anybody this year. Tonight's a big time test for them. I think Notre Dame's for real though. You have the running game. Josh Adams has 1191 yards on the year, 8.7 yards per carry so far. Notre Dame to me is back. They only had the loss to Georgia by one point. It was such a close game, could have gone either way. If they win out for Notre Dame, they beat Miami and they beat Stanford in two weeks, this team is easily in the playoff. I've got Notre Dame being back. See, and I want to focus mainly on Miami because we talked about this two weeks ago. We said, is the U back? That was a big topic we had had. And I said that it was going to take until this week to know. And yeah. I mean, they won last week, you know, good game. This is going to be a big game. College game day was there. Everyone is pumped. It's a night game. You know, this will be the biggest test for Miami thus far to really take. And I say if they win this, if they can take down Notre Dame, who is, I mean, even a seated above them, who is definitely in that uh, playoff hopes right now, they're back. I, yeah. I don't think there's any question about it. I mean, I don't even think, because, I mean, the remainder of their schedule is, is nothing this special, so they don't need that that conference championship to really show. I think that this is the biggest game that they've got so far, and if they do it, then yes, they are back. They've proven themselves to me so far. Definitely so. It's going to be an interesting matchup to watch both of those teams and see really who is back, because kind of from what I'm getting from you guys, you're saying, well, it really just depends on this game tonight. And one conference that we didn't talk about in terms of the Big 12, TCU, Oklahoma, both of those two teams still in this college football playoff hunt. Well, they play tonight and a big chance for some separation in the Big 12. And how about Iowa State making a statement and maybe going to end up in that conference championship game? We'll talk about that a little bit later. But coming up next, let's talk about the homecoming festivities here in Denton throughout the week. And we'll talk about it coming up next with our special guest, Zach Orr, joining us up here at the desk. You're watching Mean Green Game Day here on NTTV Sports. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%, that's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Here we go. 
We're gonna go out there to rain. We're gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Yeah. go Oh yeah, yes! So much fun! One of the most anticipated weeks of the entire fall semester for everybody involved with college football is your school's homecoming game. And tonight, it's homecoming again for the North Texas Mean Green as they welcome in the UTEP Miners. And to look more into some of the homecoming festivities, our reporters Saji and Garen got a chance to catch up with the campus and look through some of the homecoming festivities here in Denton. It's homecoming week at North Texas, which means the students and staff come together for dancing, bonfires, and watching football. After a close 24-23 victory against Louisiana Tech, North Texas looks to keep their successful season rolling as they face the 0-9 UTEP Miners at Apogee Stadium. The Mean Green especially want this win after losing the last two homecoming games to Louisiana Tech and a blowout loss against Portland State with the final score being 66 to seven. Since 2010, North Texas has a homecoming record of two wins and five losses, which added more disappointment to inconsistent seasons. However, with Seth Luttrell taking over the position as head coach, and with this magical season ongoing, the Mean Green hopes to win this homecoming game against UTEP. For Eric Jenkins, Riley Mayfield, Turner Smiley, Jeffrey Wilson, and the rest of the senior class. This is their last homecoming game before they move on to the next chapter in their lives. This season, the hashtag New Denton Culture is spreading across the school. And with North Texas being bowl eligible, they're looking to keep their momentum going with alumni and fans cheering them on. Saji Adam and Garen Schatz there on the, the package really kind of tying up what homecoming means to the city of Denton and the University of North Texas. And that gives me the opportunity to introduce our special guest here in the middle of the show, Mr. Zach Orr, a North Texas football legend, to say the least. Played for up until 2013, was a Heart of Dallas Bowl champion. He's sporting the ring up here on the desk, a beautiful piece of jewelry there. And, you know, Zach, it's a lot of fun having you up here, and it's a lot of fun having you back here in Denton where really you get to call home. Oh man, it's, it's a great time. It's great to be back. It's my first time um, being back in Denton for a North Texas football game since I played here in 2013. Wow. So um, it's great. It's happened to be on homecoming and <laughs> Mean Green are, are, are doing good and, and doing uh, real well. And uh, you know, it's just a great time. I've seen a lot of my former teammates and, and everything like that. So it's great to be back in Denton, Texas. That's awesome. The fact that you get to come back for the first time yeah. and you get to see a bowl eligible Mean Green oh, team and a chance for a conference title representation in that point or in this game tonight with a win. But overall, what have you seen from this new Denton? You said you even you haven't been in Denton itself, but you've been keeping up with it all uh, from wherever you're at yeah. in the country. What have you seen from Denton and what has been brought to the table with this new coaching? Staff? in a new era. Man, I see this as a, a resilient uh, group of guys. I mean, uh, you know, this team, they've, they've had a lot of close games that they've been able to battle back in and, and win. So that's showing that they, you know, they don't get rattled, that they're they're poised, they they know how to play and perform under pressure. And that's that's the formula to, to you know, becoming bowl eligible, to put yourself in a position to win a conference championship. So 
Uh, that's what I've seen from these guys. And the main thing also is they having fun. They, they're enjoying each other, the coaches, players, everybody around here. It's just a, a burst of energy that you can see uh, from the outside looking in, and it's great. And then you talk about, or off air, you and I were talking about how it was actually kind of cold when you got off yeah. the plane to, to come here. How about this weather this afternoon? And how about the crowd that's already being able to show up for, in support of the Mean Green? Uh, this, this is perfect football weather right here. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not too hot. It's, it's not too cold at all, really, once once they get going and get, get to sweating. Um, the guys will warm up uh, pretty well. So, but I mean, it's already a lot of uh, fans and stuff out here. The energy is going to be electric. It's homecoming. Uh, me and Green were first in Conference USA West, and yep. uh, you know we're ready to, to solidify and clinch that spot in the Conference USA Championship game. So uh, I know I'm going to be loud. <laughs> I'm going to try to be the best Mean Green fan there is, and uh, I know there's a lot of fans that think that way too. Definitely so. And you you talked about already the the heart of Dallas Bowl Championship in 2013. Your years here. What is it meant to be a part of the Mean Green, and what did it mean in your four years here? on campus being a part of North Texas football and how that's kind of propelled you on into your career and then afterwards. Uh, it, it's meant a lot. I yeah. mean, me coming to North Texas, I tell everybody it's been the best decision that I've made uh, up to this point just because I came in as a 17, 18 year old uh, young boy and, came, and left a, a 21, 22 year old young man. Yeah. And uh, you know, I made lifelong friends, teammates, lifelong relationships with uh, coaches and just staff all around here. And um, it really helped me grow up and become the man I am today. So uh, I'm always forever grateful for coming to North Texas and the people here, and it's always a great time to be back. What is one of your favorite things about, or maybe a story about what happened here in North Texas? What, what was one thing, I'm gonna put you on the spot yeah. here a little bit, mm -hmm. but what was your favorite moment while being a student here in North Texas? Oh man, my favorite moment had to be, uh, you know, on Halloween night, my senior year, beating okay. Rice and, and becoming bowl eligible. And uh, just to see the, not, not necessarily, just us winning that game and becoming bowl eligible, but just to see the joy um, across all my teammates, because we went through three tough years before that. And, you know, we had guys thinking about leaving, transferring, but we stuck it out and um, was able to reach one of our goals. And then just to see the love we got from the, our fellow students across campus and professors and administration, it was great, man. And I'll never forget that moment. It was just a happy moment, happy time around here. And it's something I'll never forget. And then talking about the new Denton and, and the mindset here at North Texas and Apogee Stadium, you've gotten yeah. to meet Seth Luttrell before. Yeah. What do you think about Luttrell and this new coaching staff here at Apogee? I mean, I think these coaches are great. I think uh, they they got a, a young staff that that's experienced, that you know have played the game, that uh, bring a lot of energy and a lot of attitude to the to these kids. You know what I mean? And um, that's the main thing about it that I, I see with them. They bring a lot of energy, uh, you know, to the kids. They get them going get them excited to play football and that's what you need you need guys that love football and guys that are excited to you know coach it and play it so that's what this staff is bringing coach the trail is a leader he's done a, a great job and we're glad to have him now have you gotten to attend any of the different homecoming events that have gone on throughout the campus this week oh man i, I just got out here today but i've been okay. going to everybody's tailgate and <laughs> grabbing food i don't even know if they know you know who i am i just they just saying grab a plate and it's great. I'm just eating everything I can. So. That, that southern hospitality is definitely oh, yeah. it's definitely happening. What's the best food you've had today? Oh man, probably have to be some. Uh, I had some good chicken with this barbecue oh, sauce just a go. minute ago, and that some fried bologna <laughs> was good as well. Yeah. I'm not done yet though, there so go. I can't say what's best for sure. You talked about earlier. You kind of mentioned some of the friendships that you made here in North Texas. Have you gotten to, to rekindle a couple of those in your your couple of moments here in? Denver? Oh yeah, man. My guys, uh, Breland Chancellor, yeah. James Hamilton. Those are my brothers for life. Yeah. Um, I got some more. Brandon Bird, they're on the way. Antoine Jimerson. Wow. Um, that's just to name a few. Yeah. Uh, Darius Terrell and stuff, guys like that. So I already connected with those guys uh, this week and, and today, and we're looking forward to enjoying our time here, here today. So what's next for you, Zach? Where are you, where are you going from here? Um, next for me is um, continue. I'm now on staff with the Baltimore Ravens yeah. and everything like that, working with the football coaches during the season. Then I'll be working with the personnel side of things and off season. So uh, it'll, it'll be, it's a great opportunity for me. I love ball. I get to continue to do that. And you know, I'm learning everything day by day, and I'm excited about the future. Well, we were definitely excited to have you on the desk today. Special thanks for you yeah. showing up and being our special guest here on Mean Green Game Day. Good luck to you in the future, and hey, maybe those Ravens can make the playoffs in the next couple of weeks. Exactly. Hopefully we can. Appreciate y'all having me. Go <laughs> Mean Green, baby. So, so when we come back here on Mean Green Game Day, we'll talk through this North Texas and UTEP matchup coming up on the other side of the break. You're watching Mean Green Game Day here on NCTV Sports. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere.
the words we say, the things we do, they can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize... You feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. So it's another special thanks to Zach Orr, our special guest here on Mean Green Game Day. He was a rock and a foundation for that 2013 Heart of Dallas Bowl championship team. And the reason why North Texas is bowl eligible today is a big reason in part to Jeffrey Wilson and what the running back has done in his time here at North Texas. To look a little deeper into the story of Jeffrey Wilson, once again, I'm going to hand it over to Saji Adam and Garen Schantz. Do you plan to do something outside of football or do you want to continue to do something in this field? I mean, wherever he takes me, that's where I go. Jeffrey Wilson Jr., the senior star running back at the University of North Texas, might not know where he is heading, but he knows where he came from. Starting at a young age, football was his calling. I, I, was, I was very young. I mean, uh, I was five years old. I started off in four pads, and I was able to do that because actually my dad was a coach. A coach he looks up to, the person he says is his greatest influence biggest supporter and whose steps he wants to follow in. Uh, hands down to be my dad. You know, um, back home, I would always hear a lot of people in the community, a lot of people that I knew, a lot of family members say that my dad was a, a very good football player. You know, some even say he was similar to Eric Dickinson. That was, that was kind of a nickname he had growing up playing football back in high school. They called him ED. Just like his dad, Jeffrey also became a great football player by having 5,078 career yards and 64 rushing touchdowns in his career at Eckhart High School. However, that success turned into struggle during his freshman year at UNT. I would say playing his freshman year, it opened my eyes to a lot of things, you know, uh, because obviously, um, as you can see, I, I wasn't ready yet, you know what I mean, uh, obviously, but but it just let me, it, it let me know that, you know what I mean? It let me know I had a lot to work to do. It gave me a reality check. And that's why I'm kind of glad I played my first year because it let me know right off back, hey, this is a different ball game. You gotta, you gotta step your game up and you gotta go to another level. This is not just something where you can come out and just rely on your skills. You have to actually put the work in and the time in. And, and it's a lot more than just working out. You know, it was the film side of it. Like, it was all those things that I had to stop and that helped me realize, okay, I gotta lock down on this before I could even be the player that I wanna be on the field. That realization helped shape Jeff into the player he wanted to become. Now that I'm a student of the game, I can read defenses, I can read techniques, I can look at guys and see what they like to do on film, I can see what they don't like to do. I can see um, the weak side of a defense, the strong side of a defense. So with all that coming into play and me learning all these new things, you know, it kind of slowed the game down for me. And then having coaches that can, that can apply their knowledge into me and help my game and help me go to another level, you know, was another boost. So having the coaches aspect of it, giving me the knowledge that they have, and then having the film side of it, you know, uh, it kind of shaped me to the player I am now. After a 936 yard 2016 season, Wilson made a huge decision. He would hang up the number 26 jersey for the last time and step onto the field in 2017 
as number three. And, uh, even my coach, you know, he kind of helped refresh it, you know what I mean? Just like he said, the man above, he always works in threes, you know what I mean? And he likes to do things in threes. And so, like, like knowing that and always being a Christian growing up in my life, you know, I feel like I seen the number available, you know, I could have picked from a lot of different numbers, but when I seen three, I think it was kind of ironic, you know what I mean? And like, I felt like it, I felt like it was me. And as Jeff continues his final season in a UNT jersey, he won't just be remembered for his yards and touchdowns, but also his heart and will to win. Uh, so, somebody that cherished the moment, somebody, somebody that loved the game, you know, somebody that was fun to be around, somebody that, that I always love to keep the energy up, you know what I mean? And like, and you know, that's why I always try to keep a smile on my face, even when I'm down, you know, even when I have problems and I can't show it, you know, I still want the players to know that I'm here for them and, and that, the, that the drive I got and the passion I got for the game is something that I want to touch everybody on the team. Jeffrey Wilson, an integral part of this North Texas football team and a great journey to get here as well. And as I welcome Kennedy Miller, Josh Conrad, and Ashley Pickle back to the desk, Jeffrey Wilson, guys, has been really the biggest part, at least on the offensive side. We can talk about Mason Fine. We can talk about Jalen Guyton. But the passing game doesn't have as much success without the rushing game. And Jeffrey Wilson has been the rushing game. Ashley, I'm going to start with you. I know you've gotten to meet Jeffrey Wilson personally throughout the years. What have you thought about Jeffrey Wilson and what he brings to the table for this Mean Green Ball Club? Positivity. You can see it in that package. You can see it on his face. You can see it on the sideline, game in and game out. When he's not having the biggest game, when Jalen Guyton is really stepping up to the plate, you know, like when he's, I mean, when like we've said that before, Jalen Guyton has those games and maybe Jeffrey Wilson's stats aren't the best, but he's there picking up that team. He gets pumped. I cannot tell you how pumped that guy gets on the sideline. And you can just see it. I mean, when he's out there, whether he's a captain walking out on the field, he is always focused. He's always ready to go. And then off the off the field, he's such a great guy to be around. He's so humble and he's so nice and caring. And he'll he'll see you in the walking around the athletic center and he'll say, hey, how's it going? He remembers faces. He's such a good, good guy on and off the field. Hey, you say he gets pumped. Who could not get pumped right now? This place is full. It looks great. The last time we were here, I think I called out the fans and said they don't show up. This is awesome right now. This place is packed. There's an energy here. There's a vibe. Put me in some pads, coach. I'm ready to play tonight. <laughs> Definitely so. I totally agree. Totally agree. Totally agree. With Completely you. done with it. Jeffrey Wilson, hopefully he has a big game tonight against UTEP. We'll break down that matchup coming up on the other side of the break here on Mean Green Game Day. Sorry, I didn't. I understand. I know it's not your typical resume. Okay, well. But Candidate. But I've been working double shifts just to pay for books. I've been raising my two little brothers. I'm determined, driven, motivated. Isn't that what you're looking for? Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent at gradsoflife.org. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Start a story. Adopt at theshelterpetproject.org. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat.
Last time North Texas was at Apogee Stadium, they had a big win over Old Dominion that kept them in the race in the CUSA West standings tonight with Andy Flushi and company. They have a chance to clinch a spot in the Conference USA title game on homecoming against the UTEP Miners. Welcome back here to Mean Green Game Day live just outside Gate 4 at Apogee Stadium. Guys, let's talk through this UTEP North Texas matchup. UTEP coming in 0-9, 0-5 in conference play. They have yet to have a win. North Texas favored by 22 in the line. This is the biggest that North Texas has been able to say they've been favored all year long. And first, let's talk about really this series. North Texas leads the series 14 to 8, three ties thrown in there as well, but they struggled against UTEP as of lately. The last time that UTEP has ended up losing a game to North Texas, Zach Orr was on the team back in 2013, and it's been three straight losses for the Mean Green. What do they got to do tonight? Kennedy, I'm going to start with you to turn it around tonight. Well, like you said, they're favored heavily, and so on any other day, this would seem like maybe a trap game for North Texas, but with this homecoming being today and with all these people out here, I think North Texas just has to go out there and bottle up all this extra energy that it, that they have with all these fans out here <laughs> and put it on the field. I think Jeffrey Wilson's gonna have a big day. Great package we just we just saw about him, by the way. I think he's gonna have a big day. I think the offense will be clicking on all cylinders. Yeah. I don't think these guys will be stopped. I think the only way that they lose is if they beat themselves. Penalties, turnovers, yeah. miss missed kicks. I think that's the only way that they could end up losing this game. The key to this game for North Texas is get off the bus and don't get hurt. I I'm serious. This team just has to show up on that field. UTEP is not a good football team. This team has been terrible this year. There's been one game where they haven't lost by double digits right now. All we have, and I'm normally, I normally say, look, we have to play great if we're North Texas to win. This is a game where you literally just have to play your game, play smart football, play good football. UTEP is not good. And you talk about it being a trap game. I don't think this team falls into that because Aaron Jones was terrible, last, or Aaron Jones destroyed us last year. We lost 52 to 24 to these guys, kept us from getting six wins. Those guys in the locker room right now have to be angry thinking yes. about the UTEP Miners because they went to El Paso and they got embarrassed. Yep. Aaron Jones got drafted because of the North Texas film last year. <laughs> these guys are going to see that UTEP logo and get angry. This team is going to come out angry tonight. Just show up, play angry. I'm getting angry right now. Uh, I, I, can we see, see. I can see the <laughs> we emotion. See. Give me some, but By the way, if North Texas ends up losing, I'm going to blame you for jinxing blame him totally. But it's not a jinx. You, they've switched coaches. <laughs> Mike Price is UTEP's coach. Now, the yep. man is legendary for reasons we can't say on television. <laughs> but Mike Price, who's a good coach, he turned Washington State into a really good program back in the 2000s. If you don't know Mike Price, look him up on the Internet right now, whoever's watching. But Mike Price is a good coach. But Sean Klugler gave up on this team. This team was 0-5. Now, if you're North Texas and you're saying, okay, what do we need to watch out for? It was that Western Kentucky game, 15-14, was a close loss. But and if you look at UTEP, there's nothing they do right. Now, there is one thing. Defensively, we've given up the exact same amount of points as UTEP. Okay. So maybe there, stay put. I wouldn't be a good coach this week because I'd be like, guys, let's, let's take the week off. Let's just relax. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of stuff to say. I was fixing to say, too, <laughs> about the defense, that if there is one – even like sliver of a shining moment for UTEP. It's going to be their defense, and they've had two games back to back where they've uh, had a defensive touchdown. So they're they're okay at forcing turnovers. So the biggest thing, like Josh said, is come out and try not to get injured. Should we win this game? 110% yes. But you do have to keep in mind: don't go out there and try to just run up the score as much as you can. Play your game. Have a good tempo. Don't do anything insanely crazy that's going to get you hurt. Save up some of that energy and use it against Army next week. Yeah, the UTEP football so. department's going to show the team us talking about them <laughs> to get them ready to go play. Make a hype video. Get get I'm getting set. angry. <laughs> Just get off the bus. <laughs> so now, now that with all of this being said, we, we're talking about how North Texas should win this game, and I don't think anybody disagrees with us up here. I and mean, we'll, we'll, we'll effectively pick the game later <laughs> on. But overall, this is a North Texas team that – with a win tonight, we'll stop a two-game losing streak on homecoming. It will also clinch them a spot in a conference championship game for the first time in program history. They've won 24 conference championships, but never played in an actual conference championship game. Now, what would it mean for this North Texas program, Kennedy, to win this game on homecoming and to come out victorious with a big win and to just solidify your spot in that USA title game? Or what is our hashtag around here? It's New Denton. That's yeah. what, that is exactly what it would mean. Like you said, it's never been done before that we've played in a conference championship game. 
it's part of New Den. We are doing things that have never been done before. Yeah. I think uh, a big credit to, to Ren Baker in, in transforming this athletic department and, and this football team hiring Seth Luttrell, who is a great coach. I think it would do wonders for recruiting, for attendance at these games. And I think it just kind of is the process of turning North Texas around. Yeah. I think it's crazy. And you see the helmets we're wearing this week, the green with the chrome. Oh, those so are the coolest handy. football oh helmets goodness. I've ever seen. <laughs> it looks like we're trying to be Oregon South right now. I think we look better than Oregon. I think I'm throwing that out there. I think it looks better. Their green isn't mean. Exactly. <laughs> You're exactly right. I think it's great. The new oh. Denton, the coaches, just the culture. And, and one thing, coaches will come and go. Luttrell's going to leave one day possibly. But the new football facility, that's not going anywhere. Yeah. You can't uproot that. The stadium that's nice, you can't take that away. The better weight rooms, or what Ren Baker's doing, you cannot take that away. That's here to stay. Despite coaches leaving, we'll have coordinators leave, defensive coordinators. We lost a lot of coaches last year, and this team is better. The players are here to stay. You have Mason Fine. This team is so good right now, but they're going to be even better next year. Yeah. I think it's awesome. But I have my fun fact of the week for you guys okay. coming up. Okay, here we go. There is an NFL draft prospect in this game. Can you guys, any, anybody know? Jeffrey, Jeffrey Wilson. Jeffrey Wilson. It's not Jeffrey Wilson. <laughs> but it is Jeffrey Wilson. It, it is, totally is Jeffrey Wilson. <laughs> it is UTEP's guard, Will Hernandez, okay. is ranked 55 in the NFL draft, according to CBS Sports. Wow. So, we, we, so they've got some offensive line. We dogged on UTEP. That's a second round pick, if, you're curious, <laughs> if you don't know that. Now, we dogged on UTEP, but there you go. Draft picks. You Not go. if you don't know football, if you don't know math. I'm just going to throw that Let's out there. You, that. Know. Yeah. you learn everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you exactly what that would mean for this program. Ren Baker is getting a Christmas bonus. Oh, yeah. That guy. Not only would that mean big things for this football program, the fall sports. Soccer won the conference championship tournament. Yeah. Volleyball just clinched the regular season conference championship. Yes, they did. Has the chance this upcoming week to go play in the on the tournament championship game. Yep. And if we win tonight, football's playing in the championship game. Holy cow! What is that? What does it mean for football? What does it mean for New Denton as a whole, man? Yeah. Do you know, like, okay, so New Denton, everything's <laughs> been kind of good the past two years. Yep. Do you know what started last year? Mean Green Game Day. It did. You're exactly <laughs> I right. Is it a coincidence? I think You're not. You're welcome, Ren Baker. <laughs> Just really quickly, guys, give me your key players on offense and on defense. Go for it. Well, I'm a big quarterback guy, so I'm going to go with Mason Fine, and I'm going to go with Keyshawn McClain on the other side. Okay. I think quarterbacks have to win. Some, if Mason Fine comes out and gets the ball rolling early on, then this game will be out before the end of the first quarter. Gotcha. Trevor Moore on offense. That's all I got. Okay, Trevor Moore. That's perfect. And Jeffrey Wilson. He's my boy. Jeffrey Wilson is outstanding. Hopefully he has a big game tonight, and the North Texas Mean Green will have a homecoming win over the UTEP Miners. When we come up next on Mean Green Game Day, we'll have President Neil Sponsors joining us up at the desk and we'll predict some of the, today's top matchups in the nation of college football coming up next here on Mean Green Game Day. Hey, look, it's those guys. What's good? What's up? What's happening today? Let's go, Pearly Whites, man. Yeah. Yeah. Check it, boys. Check it. Yeah. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Sir, go ahead and step out of the vehicle for me. Yes, sir. See ya, buddy. Today, Sean's got a hearing. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Special edition here of Mean Green Game Day, homecoming edition outside gate four here at Apogee Stadium. And we are joined at the desk by our special guest, President Neil Smontras. Welcome again. You're the first repeat guest here like at Mean that. Green Game Day. So how does that feel? Uh, I love it. And I'm looking forward to the three-peat. <laughs> there, oh, there you go. Maybe we'll have you on next year as well. But we're going to predict some of the nation's top matchups. We'll get to that North Texas matchup here in a little bit. But first, I do want to ask you, how far 
fun has it been watching this team this year? Oh, this has been a great year. Although I'll tell you, they've nearly caused a heart attack in the suite for me about three, four times. You high know. blood pressure. <laughs> uh, yeah, That's high what blood I pressure. said earlier. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, when you win like four games by a cumulative, like what, eight points or something, uh, you know, I guess we like close games today. I do not want a close game. Definitely so, definitely so. How have the homecoming festivities been for you? Oh, homecoming's been incredible. This whole week has just been about as much fun as you can possibly have. We did the parade today. My granddaughter rode with us. We had a ball uh, at the uh, Monday homecoming event, the barbecue. You know, every night there's been something special. We welcomed alumni. We honored great alumni. We welcomed our Golden Eagles. Homecoming is a time when memories are made and a time when you can come back and remember those. Definitely so, and let's get into these matchups here. We're gonna start in the Conference USA. UAB at UTSA, a matchup between two teams that North Texas has been able to take advantage of this year, but both teams also still in the hunt right up at the top of the conference standings and for bowl eligibility. If you're looking at UTSA, UAB already has their sixth win. I personally have the Roadrunners pulling this one out at home in the Alamo Dome. I think they're gonna take down the Blazers and they have a little bit of extra edge in terms of trying to win it for that bowl eligibility. Kennedy, who you got? I'm rolling with UAB. I think UTSA early on in the year, they were surging. We were wondering if Frank Wilson was gonna leave after the year and yeah. take another job. But now they've kind of they've kind of fallen flat. And UAB is a really good team. They've really done a good job of rebuilding that program up. I'm rolling with UAB here. Yeah, you know, last year I did really badly at this, but I'm going UAB <laughs> too. Uh, they surprised us. I think there's a lot of talent on that team. There you go. Well, last year you threatened to take away your scholarships because you picked against That's you. That's true. Yeah, you did do that. that. <laughs> I'm going to take, take UAB here today. They beat Southern Miss. They stomped Rice. This is a team that's rolling right now. They're going to win today, and they're going to win next week in the swamp. UAB is going to beat Florida. Wow. Watch out for that next week. That's oh, very that bold. That is a bold oh. prediction. Goodness so much, gracious. My Trevor Moore prediction was right. This one's going to be right. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's check his blood alcohol content. <laughs> <laughs> I got UAB. I'm going to go UAB as well. I, don't, I think maybe whatever's in the water here in New Denton might possibly be in the water for that football program up there. They have come back first year on the program. They have really surprised us. And, I mean, UTSA has done nothing really to surprise me thus far. You know, we got the huge one over them, which was great. Uh, I think UAB is going to carry that momentum. They became bowl eligible last week as well. Yeah. They're carrying that momentum down there to UTSA, and that program is probably one of the most determined programs in Conference USA right now. So I guess I'm the only one in terms of picking a Texas team. I'm, I'm just all by myself over here. Yet yeah, but again, it's our but dreaded rivals. Yeah, that's very true. true. That's very yeah. true. I don't like UTSA, but I think they will win today. Moving on now to the SEC, though, Alabama, Mississippi State. A big game. I know Kennedy, I can almost guarantee who's going to win <laughs> or who's he's going to pick in this game, but I'm going to go roll tide. I think Mississippi State keeps it close, but I think Alabama just has too much at the end. Uh, which camera do I look at? <laughs> yeah. I want to be serious in this. This one right there. This one right yeah, here. That one right there. Really? <laughs> what type of question is this? Alabama or Missis Mississippi State? Are you kidding me? I'm rolling with the roll, Todd. I'm go. rolling with them. They're going to roll over Mississippi State. It's not even close. It's not even close. <laughs> yeah, no one would like to see Alabama upset more than me. Oh, my. Okay? I would love that upset. Oh, I would. I, I dream about that upset. But <laughs> oh, no. Mississippi State, no. Come on. There's not even, a, yeah. a, like, how many points? 30? I yep. mean, what are we going to go here? So, yeah, Alabama, walk away victory. I'm glad you're sitting in between me and Kennedy. Go Bulldogs! Whoa. You know, you know what, wow. Alabama, Alabama struggles against dual threat quarterbacks. I think Nick Fitzgerald can do that. This is a team that's been playing better. They had the big win at AM. It's a team Mississippi State's been embarrassed by Georgia. They've been embarrassed by Auburn. Alabama may be a little lulled to sleep. They've had some nice, easy wins. Didn't look that great against LSU last week. They'll be going roll tide because they'll need some toilet paper after this loss. Woo. Mississippi State is wiping the tide today. Someone get a to bouncer. We're going gonna... to have to hold them back. Take my IP State out, brother. <laughs> by double digits, Mississippi rolls today. And see, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I might be able to compete with you on wanting to see Bama lose. I want to see the tyranny taken down. Goodness. But if we were talking Bama, Georgia, Maybe we would have a different outcome. We're talking Bama, Mississippi State. As much as I hate to admit with Kennedy, are you kidding me? Is this is this the camera? Are you kidding me? 
You guys yeah. will see what happens tonight. We'll, we'll see. If you're right, then, man, your bold predictions are just through the roof and they're correct <laughs> a lot of the time. But, but we've talked about this next matchup already, a ACC showdown, or I guess it's ACC and then Notre Dame, an independent showdown as the Miami Hurricanes at home trying to knock off Notre Dame, who's in the top four of the playoffs. I think Lampius is going to like this. I think Notre Dame's going to end up winning this ball game, and I don't think it's even going to be close. I think the Irish come out big. I got you too, Nick. I think Notre Dame is going to win. <laughs> I think they're the more seasoned. Their offensive line is full of juniors and seniors. They have a really good running back back there. I think the only way I see Notre Dame losing is if they fall behind early. I don't think they're a team that can come back from a deficit, but if they, if they start out with the lead, I think Notre Dame will win. Yeah, we've all seen the t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, so all I can say is I don't think uh, Miami can pull this off, and I'm kind of rooting for Notre Dame. Uh, I think Notre Dame, the running game with Wimbush and Josh Adams on the ground attacking Miami. Miami's been so close in a lot of games. I think this is going to be a great game tonight, down to the wire. I think Notre Dame pulls it out with their ground game tonight. See, and I'm, I said it earlier. I'm going the U is back. I've got I've got okay. all my pennies in that jar. I really do. I think that there is a big there's a big yeah, we'll throw up the U there if you want to. And I just think that they I think that this, like we said, this is gonna be the game that they prove to themselves if they really are back. Yeah. And I am I am going with the U on this one. Miami pulling this one out. Well, all right. So we've got a little bit of difference there. Miami being pickles pick here today, but let's go to the Big 12 really quickly. Let's go TCU, Oklahoma. I have the Sooners at home. I think they're gonna pull it off in Norman. I, I do as well. I have the Sooners. I think Baker Mayfield kind of brings that Johnny Manziel feel, okay. except in a more disciplined way, maybe with a better <laughs> arm as well. I just kind of think that in these games like this, they're both kind of evenly matched, well coached. TCU is extremely well coached defensively, but when you have Baker Mayfield, it's just that extra oomph that kind of puts you, that kind of gives you that win here tonight. Yeah, so, you know, we have a regent, uh, Rusty Reed, whose son plays for TCU, and I know politics and athletics shouldn't mix. <laughs> but they do. However, <laughs> I'll just say I'm kind of rooting for my friend's son in TCU, well, so you bring go. on TCU. I thought we were going to be four for four today. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we might have been under other circumstances. <laughs> Fair true. A great pick. TCU, the defense has been lights out this year. You look at similar opponents between TCU and OU, TCU has been more impressive in almost every way. Oklahoma, that defense is a joke right now. I think Baker Mayfield could be the difference maker, but I think TCU and that defense, they go into Norman. It's not the same under Lincoln Riley. I think that shows up tonight. TCU wins by 10 points, I'll say. Yeah, and hold it. Where's your bring it to Texas? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's fair. Man, I thought I was going to be the only one picking the Frogs on this one. Go Frogs all the way, 100%. I think I just I love the Frogs. I'm rooting for the Frogs. If anyone ends up in the playoffs from the Big 12, I want it to be the Frogs. So. All right. Right down the road, right down 35. Let's go, Frogs. Well, all right. That brings us to our biggest matchup of the day, North Texas UTEP Homecoming Edition here on NTTV Sports. Stick to the plan, you know, and stick to what our coaches tell us, and we'll just do our job. And, and the outcome going to be us winning. I'd like to say how uh, excited this team is to have all our fans, former Letterman and fans, back in Denton for homecoming this week. Uh, it's always a special time when we can reconnect with old friends and uh, represent the former players uh, who are back uh, to watch us play. We expect there to be you know, a lot of people, I expect there to be energy, you know, uh, just like every other home game, but you know, it's homecoming, so a lot of people are going to be here. So another big matchup for North Texas and a chance to clinch a spot in the CUSA championship game with a division title and a win tonight over a winless UTEP. This is not a time for UTEP to get their first win. North Texas is going to win this game and they're going to win it big. I think it's going to be by 20 or more and then it's going to be a mean green win. Kennedy, who you got? Well, partly because I'm really excited about these homecoming festivities and I don't want to lose my scholarships. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm going with North Texas here and I'm going big. Uh, I think the score, and this is just, it just came in my head, 38-14. All right. Wow, okay. You know, minors, I'd say minor leaguers, we're going to kill them. There it okay. is. Oh. We're going to get revenge for every time we've ever been embarrassed by UTEP. Yep, we're going like to keep it. the pedal to the metal, and we're going to win by a good 20. I'll take you one more, 22 points. Okay. All right, there you All go. Right. Covering the spread. Well, my key to the game was North Texas just has to get off the bus and show up out there. I heard they did, so I'm taking North Texas big today. <laughs> we won't need Trevor Moore to kick a last-second field goal. North Texas wins by a today. And I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to... 
He's going to get some respect back. here from the president, and we're putting on the scrappy <laughs> oh, yeah. head. Let's go. Got to bring up the scrappy head with the president on the desk as well. All the way across the board, North Texas going to win this game tonight on homecoming against the UTEP Miners. Special thank you to everybody who was involved in this Mean Green Game Day broadcast. Special thank you to our special guest, President Neil Smotris. Hopefully, we'll have you on here in a couple weeks again as well for maybe a conference championship game. Love that. That would be a lot of fun as well. For everybody at the desk, Kennedy Miller, Josh Conrad, Ashley Pickle in the scrappy head. I'm Kyle Yeoman. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week here on Mean Green Game Day.